Reading through the Revelation. We are at Revelation chapter 21, and then next time, chapter 22, the last chapter. Chapter 21 and 22 are actually the pinnacle of the whole message of the vision that John had for the church of his day. And it says that there is hope, that there is something far greater, far better ahead. And for that, we serve Christ faithfully and endure hard times patiently and move forward in our spiritual journey. So we'll pick it up in Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. A few notes here, a couple of scriptures. Second Peter chapter 3, 10 through 18 speaks about this new earth. And then also Isaiah 65 verse 17 speaks of this new earth, this new work of God. It seems like it is like Genesis 1 and 2, a new garden of Eden, perfection. And I, I kind of think that that's what heaven might be like. It's like God starting over again with the garden of Eden and his people and the redemption of humanity. So here we have in chapter 21 and 22, the zenith of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was gone. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 18, it talks about this new earth. And then notice that the sea was no more. The sea was gone. Sea in Bible terminology usually spoke of trouble. Remember when they were on the Sea of Galilee, which is really a lake, but the storms came up and they were sore afraid. Often the Bible pictures the restless sea. And so by the sea being no more, by the sea being gone, it's speaking of this turmoil, this trouble, this restlessness, uh, not being a part of our eternity. You can read about that in Isaiah 57, verse 20. In Revelation 13, 1, you might remember the beast came out of the sea. By the sea being gone, God is picturing a picture of serenity and peace and calm rather than trouble and turmoil. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. This is the picture of the church. Notice in verse 9 and verse 10. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come with me, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem. So John tells us this symbol of this city, New Jerusalem, coming down is a symbolic message of the church, the bride of Christ. We find this same kind of analogy in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. And notice it says, it's, the bride is beautifully dressed for her husband. What he's saying there is, this picture of eternity is beautiful, more beautiful than we can describe. Beautiful beyond comprehension. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. 
He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Here we have two main thoughts that are important. First of all, that God's presence among his people is what makes heaven, heaven. And secondly, that there is comfort in eternity. The tears, the sorrow, the hardships of life, all that will be past. And only joy, peace, and calm and serenity lies for us in eternity. No more tears. No more crying. Joy for eternity. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. The same phrase that Jesus said when he paid for our sins on the cross. It is is finished. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Here we have God saying on the throne that he is the Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega being similar to our A and Z, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the all in all. And we have Jesus also saying this in the book of Revelation, Jesus is God. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. Water is essential to our earthly existence. Without it, we will not survive. And so water is symbolic of salvation. Salvation is essential for our life in eternity. Without it, we will not survive. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. You can either be a part of the conquering kingdom of God, or you will be a part of the cowardly kingdom of the enemy. Choose to be a conqueror, a conqueror in Christ. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come with me. I will show you the bride, the church, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me in the Spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. So here we have the bride, the new Jerusalem, which is the people of God, the church, the church triumphant in heaven, the church in holiness and purity in eternity. It's shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. The city wall was broad and high, with twelve gates guarded by twelve angels. And the names of the twelve tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had twelve foundation stones. On them were written the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And so we have this picturesque description of the church of God in the heavens or in eternity. The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, 
and measure its wall. When he measured it, he found it was a square, as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick, according to the human standard used by the angel. So here we have the city, the New Jerusalem, the church. And he says it is measured, and as it is measured, it's a gigantic cube, 1,400 miles in each direction. A gigantic cube. What is he saying here? Well, in the Old Testament, when they had the temple, there was one place that only the high priest could go once a year, and that was the Holy of Holies. That was the very sacred part of the temple. That Holy of Holies was where the priest would represent the people of God before God in God's presence. And so the picture here is that in the church, the presence of God is very near. For just like the Holy of Holies from the Old Testament temple, this new city is where God's presence will be among his people. And not just the high priest can come, but everyone is welcome. Everyone has access. Just like the Holy of Holies was face-to-face -face communion with the presence of God, so in the church in eternity, they will be in face-to-face -face communion with their Creator, the presence of God right there with the people of God, and all are welcome. The wall was made of jasper, and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones inlaid with 12 precious stones. As you can see, this church, this new Jerusalem, is precious. It is rare. It is valuable. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophoraz, and the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. So this gold and precious stones that made up the walls of this new Jerusalem, this church, speaks of its beauty beyond description, its value that is rare, and how precious it is to God. Let's pick up at verse 21. The twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. This is where we get the common conception of the streets of heaven paved with gold. Gold is used as common as asphalt is used in our day. We think of gold as very precious, and we think of gold as the high standard of value. But in heaven, it's used for asphalt. What is this passage trying to say to us? The things that we value down here are not the same things that are valued in heaven. We often value things here. But in heaven, people are the true treasure. That's what Christ died for, people. All the wealth of earthly empires has no comparison to what God has in store for you in eternity. I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. He's saying God's presence is right there among God's people, 
and God is available to all. He is there available to all. I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. God is available to all. His presence is right there among the people of God in eternity. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. Remember, Jesus said in John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. The nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no night there. There is freedom of access and security and safety. There is no need for fear. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, the roll call of heaven. Is my name written there? When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder. And so we have the highlights of the book of Revelation in chapter 21 and 22. As we close with chapter 21 and then next video in the book of Revelation with Revelation chapter 22, may you be assured of your faith, faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 that you can know beyond a shadow of doubt that you have a relationship with God through Christ and that your name is written in that book of life. Till next time, may God bless you and keep you.